Doodle Boat back again. Tell you what, the Pilot Vanishing Point is a gorgeous pen. Super practical, has the clicky click. Not many have that. Also, for many, this is an entry gold nib pen. But we have an imposter because this isn't a Pilot. It is a Moon Man or Mahjong, as it says on the ad when you're looking online. This is the Mahjong A1. You know, I thought kind of ballsy to copy the cap list, the pilot vanishing point, because this thing actually works quite well. You don't really hear many issues of dry up mega popular pen. No one has copied this so far until just recently. So I had to kind of get, well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to get one. Thought I would check it out. I actually don't even own a pilot vanishing point myself. So I thought, let's give this a try. 34 bucks. How could you go wrong? Let's talk about it and see if it's in any good. It comes in a bunch of colors, just like the real Pilot Vanishing Point. Also comes with a little few doodads in the box here. There's an extra one of these here already in the pen, but this is an empty cartridge. Also has a little stopper here on the top, which is handy dandy to fill it up. It's got this little eyedropper dealie as well. So that's uh, very nice, well, very thoughtful. And also has a converter, which looks just like the Pilot Con 40 has that kind of slower travel because the part of the feed there goes all the way up into it. So slightly different, but same kind of deal, if you know what I mean. And, you know, when I got this, I thought, let me check something out. I haven't done this yet, but I got my Pilot Metro out just to see. Because, uh, yeah, they, they didn't try to hide the fact they're making this a dead nuts copy. They even copied the, uh, the whole feed setup and everything else, too. So let's just take... This Mahjong converter, pop it on the Pilot Metropolitan, yeah, and it fits in there. Absolutely perfect. So if you have a Con 40 kicking around, they are, yeah, that's a perfect fit. <laughs> so it fits into that feed. It's got that fin down there. You can see that's why it's designed that way. But uh, that's that's absolutely amazing. They didn't even bother with uh, beating around the bush and trying to change things up. They even copied the converter. So there we go. Let's put that stuff away. Um, come back to the pen here. So that's what comes with it. And this is what it looks like. It's got the nice ka-chunk, ka-chunk here. Very satisfying. The first thing I did when I opened up the pen and got it, I had to drive to the office, but a 15, 20 minute drive, whatever it is, I clicked it, you know, just the whole drive there and back. And on the way home as well, all around town, I had this pen for about a week and a half now. It hasn't missed once. The action hasn't jammed up. The trap door has been intact. It hasn't, you know, binded up on me or nothing. No misfires or anything. So I got to tell you, uh, you know, if you're going to copy, you might as well do a good job. <laughs> this pen is, they've done a fantastic job. I don't know how they've done this for 34 bucks. This thing has uh, not hard started. Nothing. It writes super smooth. This is their extra fine nib. It hasn't missed a beat. So I, if we're going to go through this. A few little, you know, flaws I found on this thing. And we'll, you know, we'll talk about the actual vanishing point. A bit here too, but it, uh, yeah, for 34 bucks, I am thoroughly impressed. Let's get you into the nitty gritty. As always, with a black pen like this, contrast is going to be a bit of a pain, but just pops. Well, here, let's just show you this here real quick as well. You got the logo here, you got the Moon Man. I know the ad says Mahjong. If we get you in a little bit closer, let's see if we can zoom in. We have these little uh, effects here. Oh, the tripod shaking on you. There we go. They look like do not enter signs. So, you know, all around the, the, you know, cap band. There is no cap on this pen. It's capless, but there you go. That's about the only details. I'll keep the flash on for a minute here just so you can sort of try to see some stuff. We got a clip on here, steel clip, very tight. Like if you do it this way, man, you're almost gonna rip your fingernail off. So that is one thing that is a fairly firm clip. Got the push button here in the back. Goes on there quite nice. And let's just show you that, uh, this action here on it. It's pretty slick how this works. I don't own a vanishing point, but you can see, well, let's get you a little closer if we can not get too much shaking. Okay, there we go. So you see there's a little latch there and there's a little wire. You can see on either side that loops around. So that's a spring forcing it up. And it's just like a little drawbridge that goes down. And so it just, you can see there's a, a, a little, uh, it goes through that little bracket, that little action there. So that's how it just, it just rotates on that. It's super Super simple design, like it's ingenious, but it's very, very simple. Nothing to really go wrong. I like that. Opens up the trap door. I'll talk about how it does that too, because it's a specific design there in the feed. It stays down, and then when it's bye-bye time, the trap door just shoots back up. So it's just so simple, like just a very simple mechanism. No one out of the thing doesn't fail. But yeah, that's, you know, they didn't come up with it. <laughs> 
they just copied it. And so when you don't have to put any effort in and being ingenious and come up, coming up with a very cost effective, friggin' awesome solution, you just copy it. Of course, you can undercut the competition. But anyways, let's uh, pop this open. It's an all uh, brass uh, body pen, I believe, and they spray a coating on there too. We'll talk about that too. You can sort of see the orange peel in the coating. We'll compare that against the uh, the Pilot Metropolitan just as a reference. I'll keep the flash on. This is looking not too bad. Uh, then you got your main body. You can't really take the pen apart too much. That's about it. There is a spring down in there. I think they should go with a bit of a not so heavy duty spring because when you put this in, I do not have a Pilot Vanishing Point as a reference. So if you have one at home and you're playing along, get it out. Pop the uh, the back off here, put the nib assembly in, and I promise you, I've, I'm willing to say this, we've never actually seen a vanishing point. That tab on the real deal would be sitting down into the slot. So a bit of an oversight because uh, when you go to put it in, this should just drop and guide it, but you could put it like this, you know, put the back of the pen on, and it's not, not going, oh, you got to turn it and just sort of press it in there. I, you know... Small little detail like that. If you're going to do it, just if you're going to copy, the answer is right in front of you. But maybe they 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 didn't they didn't notice. But yeah, let me know in the comments if on the real vanishing point when you put this in, it should just sit. I'd say probably just something just like that. Anyways, you could swap that spring out. I guess it's it's pretty heavy duty. Doing my best to get you a close up of the uh, nib and feet assembly. So this is a, I wanted to show this. This kind of has to do part and parcel with that little trap door they got. So you can see the feed unit is raked up a little bit. It's not coming straight out, it's up, but then the nib bends it back down. And that's just to uh, engage that little trap door properly. So it's gonna essentially, it's most likely gonna be touching off the bottom of the feed. That drops down, then your nib comes out, right? Cause you don't want to be blasting the nib through that little trap door. I mean, maybe it makes a little bit of contact, but that's why this is angled up to do that. The nib breaks back down, so then when you go to right, you're at a decent uh, writing angle. So I do want to get my hands on a real vanishing point at some point just to confirm that's what it's like on the real deal. Okay, you got to check this out. I managed to get this on uh, on video. If I, I feel like uh, David Attenborough from BBC doing a nature documentary. We're waiting for the little, the little bird to come out of its cave or its nest or something. But what we're looking at here is you can see that nib doesn't touch the trap door. See? Look at that. It's the feed bumps it. So it, yeah. And then that feed is raked the angle it is to open up that trap door all the way without touching the nib. But then you can see here the nib, oh, the focus is bad, but it, you can tell it's raked back down to get the proper writing angle so it's not weird. But look at that. Yeah, that's really slick. Super smart design, little tiny detail, very cost effective and we're not damaging the point of the nib. But I was able to see that on the videotape to confirm that. But yeah, whoever came up with that, brilliant little idea. <laughs> you dirty dog, that was a good one. Yeah, I, I bet they had some type of experience with maybe designing latches or, or things like that, because that's just super clever. And that's what's neat too, because it's, it's quite small, right? So how are you gonna test that idea out? You can do it pen and paper, but you can also just build it to scale. So whether you got a, some sheet metal and a break and you can you can mess around you can bend some angles and, and get some bits together or you could just even get some wood and, and cut it up and just play around with different angles and different lengths and make a little trap door the design you have in in mind and it you know it could take up a tabletop and then you make it and everything is uh i don't know this piece here instead in real life is maybe 100 millimeters long instead and you you come up with your model and you tweak it and adjust it and you get it working and it's just you, you set up a jig and it's just working, working, working. It's exactly what you want. Then, you know, to give you some ballpark ideas, you can just take all the measurements and then scale it back down, get on your, uh, your drawing there and then put it into the system. And then away you go with your first batch to make sure your idea you made out of blocks or Legos or whatever it was, uh, is working just as good as did it on the bench. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I like it a lot. All right. Lost audio for a second there. We got the main body out of the pen now and I, yeah this is a noticed i think that spring needs to be a little bit less beefy let me know on your uh actual pilot vanishing points as well after lots of clicking if i wipe this puppy clean the ink will start to gather and it's just i'll, I'll show you the, on the action there but there's quite a quite a lot of energy in that spring and you're getting a lot of momentum and uh 
when it stops ka chunk it's it's just you know puts a little vibration through this whole unit and some of the ink is squirting out so i don't know if it's that common on the regular vanishing point but this is the spring action seems a little too strong so you could do get a little bit on there you don't really see it though because most of it's covered no big deal and then uh, the crimping mechanism yeah it's it's almost like it reminds me of a crimp that's really on there with four four points making contact with that feed but this probably all looks very similar to a modern day vanishing point one little thing i noticed here as well so I don't think you can really take this pen apart too much. You can pop off the back here. So this is just a cover on the cartridge. So I imagine you could just take a pilot cartridge, pop it in there. So if you got those kicking around, you're good to go. Or fill one of the empty ones like I did. I filled this up because it holds more ink and I wanted to use this quite a bit. So you put that in there, but uh, you can't take... Well, let me know, but I don't think you can take the feet out on this sucker. I, I take a, took a look here, but it's these little tabs. So if we look at those they are essentially crimps and they're crimped all the way around the body. So that's going to sort of stop things from moving. So I don't think you can re really disassemble this pen. And one little thing, and again, a nitpick, if I'm going to do it, let's talk about this. These aren't all like 90 degrees to each other and they're not all on the same point. So you can see this one's here, this one's up higher, this one's way lower. And yeah, and that's more, more than 90 degrees. So these, you know, I just, I don't know if they're all done by hand on one machine and the operator rotates it pinch, pin, pinch, or, you know, at pilot, I would be certain that these would be 180 degrees out from each other. You can see it should be here, not here. And uh, they're probably all in the same height or if they're going to stagger them, I might do two closer, two further back, but they're all, they're going to be, there's going to be two that are 180 out from each other. That would, I, again, I don't own a vanishing point, but little things I notice, uh, I will pretty much 100% guarantee you that will be on there. Let me know in the comments if that is true. So you can't take that apart. Uh, and that's why you can't do it. But little, little things like that. But you're trying to save a few bucks. So that's what's, that's what's going to happen. You have to cut a few corners. You're not going to get the custom die. You're not going to make that specific tool in the machine to go pachunk just perfectly when you're trying to do it for 34 bucks instead of 100 bucks. You got to make a sacrifice somewhere. But it doesn't impact the uh, functionality of the pen. Let's put it back together. Um, that's easy to do, just slips in there, as you can see. Again, you gotta kinda line that up. And it, yeah, yeah, same thing here too. I can't take the action out. Those little tabs, there's a little little ridge there. So I don't know what, I, I'd probably bust it or break it a little bit too. And you can just see a little, little bit of the coating's coming off there. But yeah, these are little things that don't really impact the pen. This is the only thing uh, that I can see that does kind of annoy me. Again, I'd be betting on a real vanishing point, this doesn't happen. But look at that, see the button? It's off just a few degrees, off at a bit of an angle. Click's not too bad, right? The action's okay, but back up again. Oh, there we go, now it's kicking over that way. So uh, yeah, let me know again in the comments, the real vanishing point, is that button dead nuts straight up or does it kick over to? Because it does have a fair amount of slop. So that's the only thing there. That's about the only visual thing that I, I would say you could differentiate as far as, you know, the lower lower quality on the outside is that thing is just off kilter a little bit. So if that really bugs you, yeah, this, uh, this, this pen will do it to you. But other than that, it's pretty good. You know, a few little flaws with the coating. You can see there's a little chip there. I, that, I don't know if that came like that or if it happened shortly after, because literally I played with the pen for five minutes and noticed that. And you can just see the quality of the coating. It's just not as good again this is all little part and parcel of saving a few bucks but you can see some of these superficial flaws here um this thing has been in a pen case it, it's been placed on a table that's it i haven't dropped it nothing i've been really making sure to be good good to it so yeah just a few imperfections in the paint if we compare that with let's say on a here we go pilot metropolitan okay um again this one's been used but you can just see the much finer spray there that's a much better coating a little better preparation on there as well so again you're going to cut the cost by about a third you're going to save corners somewhere but all in all performance i'm going to do a writing sample now it hasn't missed a beat this thing is really good for this kind of price point this is a phenomenal pen it's got the click action uh yeah it hasn't missed i uh, all i would say is i think the spring's too strong because when you if you unclick it here like you can feel like a little recoil in it just because the energy in that spring. So 
that'd be one thing I'd recommend on there. They probably don't have to go as heavy duty with that spring. You could shorten it, maybe just not as as you know as thick of a wire on there as well, a little bit lighter duty, and cut it back a bit so when you put the pen together, it's just sitting down there. That'd be maybe one little tweak. You could probably even do that at home as well. Give that a try if you have a spring that fits there, that's close in size, but not quite as heavy duty and a touch shorter. On to the writing sample. I'll make it pretty quick. I'll do a few glam shots and give you some final thoughts, and we'll close out the video. Yep, so this thing writes exceptionally well. Uh, <laughs> this is an extra fine nib. I would say it's it's somewhere around there, maybe just more like a regular fine. I, I tried like a Faber-Castell fine nib next to that and then some other ones as well, and it's pretty much on par with that. Uh, writes perfectly, the flow is where you would expect it for a, a nib like this. It hasn't really missed a beat on me at all, but uh, yeah, on regular use, you just click it, boom, click it. You could just do it all day long, and this is that's what's the handy about these pens. I get it now, not owning one at all. They never really appealed to me, but owning, you know, a fake one, sort of being an honorary member of the Vanishing Point Club in a sense, I really start I start to get it. I was worried this just wouldn't be comfortable. Just the design never really did it for me. And uh, but yeah, functionality wise, I really, really understand it. So much I actually I want to get a proper uh, pilot vanishing point and I'm even maybe toying with a vintage one instead of one of the new ones so I'm still playing with that idea but yeah this thing just <laughs> for the writing you know they they got the mechanism down they got the overall appearance down functionality this thing doesn't dry out they got the little trapdoor vanishing point action down like I said a few little tweaks they could do to improve it but for 34 bucks you know really good and then to top it off uh, for an extra fine nib, this is a really, really good writing extra fine nib. So I am blown away. This is uh, a phenomenal job. Like I said, if you're going to copy someone, uh, at least pay some tribute and do a good copy instead of a garbage one. And this is a good copy, I got to tell you. Uh, yeah. So where does this leave me now with this A1? I, it's it's a really great performing pen for this price point. Now, again, it is totally copying another design of another pen manufacturer. And it's, you know, we're not kind of cool with that over here. I did ask that question, you know, why are they all these, why are there so much copying going on? So I'll put a link up there and also in the description, you can learn about it. So, um, it at least gave me a little bit of a perspective into things. I don't hundred percent agree with it, but it, I at least want to hear the other side of the argument. Like it sort of makes sense now. I, I at least get some of those talking points. So yeah. But I mean, it would have been just cool if, if they're, you know, I guess that's the point of a copied pen or replica pen is just to make it look just like it. But there's a lot of little things you could do, some little design cues. You could make it faceted. I know Pilot's done that in the vintage ones, but you could bring that back or just a few things, maybe switch up the clip, do a few things just to make it a little bit more unique, but whatever. It is what it is. I guess, you know, there is a place in the marketplace for, for pens like this. Uh, if you can't afford the full price of a vanishing point, I get it. It's not cheap. Um, here is essentially the same experience for a fraction of the cost. Now, I'll, I will say this one thing. There are vanishing points available that aren't the full gold nib. And um, you can get those ones. That call it, they call it the special alloy nib, <laughs> which <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's a st stainless steel nib is what it is. Just very similar to what's on here. And I was looking, and they got lots of cool colors on uh Amazon.com and for the US, 87 bucks. That's a pretty decent price in US dollars. This is probably $27 or $30. So that's reasonable, you know, three times more, but you will get like better quality for the coating. Probably this, this will be straight and just overall assembly and you're buying the legit thing. If, if that's, you know, you, you want to draw the line in the sand and not buy the replica. That's the easiest entry point in. But, uh, you know, if you really love these but want to take it traveling and don't want them to get damaged, yeah, there's definitely a place for them, a, a backup one, or if it's a certain environment, it could get dinged up and you don't want to get your really nice version messed up, yeah. Or uh, if a buddy really likes your vanishing point so much, but you don't want to drop 150, 200 bucks as a gift, you get them the replica one, right, for 30 bucks. So that's a nice thing to do. But there are a place in the marketplace for these types of pens, 
Um, some people this really annoys. Other ones are like, yeah, it is what it is. And I'm, I'm kind of in that same boat as well. But this one, I at least feel uh, they're doing some type of homage by making it really good and functioning quite well. And yeah, this so far has been super reliable as far as functioning as a pen. So if you got one of these, please leave your feedback on thoughts on these as well. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer in the comments. I'm not a vanishing point expert because I've never owned one. This is my first tee, but I, I think, uh, you know, I'll get one of the real deals here coming up soon and focus isn't happening. So I think we're just going to shut it off there, cut to some glam shots and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.